Welcome back to Oriental Code, guys. In the last video, we talked about variables, the eight primitive types of data types in Java. Today, we will be talking about non-primitive type in Java, which is string. So, what is a string? String is a class which allows us to create an instance of an object of string to store a text or a sequence of characters. So, I already have opened up a project. To declare in a string, you just have to type string, string course equals coding, string course, what is this? coding with fun. So I have declared a variable string named course with the value of fun. A string is declared using double quotes. I mean, the value of string is declared using double quotes. There's, this is a method one, a way one to declare a string. Another way to declare a string object is to type string state equals new string California. So basically, as you can see in the first statement, string course is declared as a string reference and it is initialized with a string literal coding is fun. And in the second statement, in the second statement, state is declared as a string reference and initialized via new operator, new operator and a constructor, constructor, this constructor string to contain California. Let's declare another string literal. String works. Works fun equal coding is fun. So the reason I declared coding is fun again is to, to let you guys know that Java has provided us a special me mechanism to keeping a string literal in so-called common pool. If the two strings have the same literal content, for example, coding course and what fun have the same content, they will share the same storage inside the common pool. This approach is basically the reason we do this is to converse uh, storage in frequently used strings. On the other hand, this object is created via the new, new operator using the string constructor to store California and are kept in the heap storage. So each of uh, so if I were to declare another. state so I have two I have, a, I have two instances of a string one is state and another is favorite state they have the same value California California like here it says that String objects are created via the new, the new operator and constructors are kept in the heap. Each string object, each of these, has their own storage just like any other object. They do not share storage in the heap, even if the two strings have the same content. Even if, even if these two objects have the same content, they do not share storage. So let's continue with the course further. What can we do with strings? We can concatenate them. What I mean by concaten concatenate is, let's see, we can say string system. Let's, let's initialize new string literals. My name.
Fourth place. Korea. H equals to twenty one and system. Let's print it out system dot sorry guys my brightness my I cannot see my keyboard in the middle of the night string dot out dot print print my name is is Jerry The string before my name and my fourth place is fourth not a fourth place third age is This is what I mean by concatenate. We can add strings together. When I say add, they're not literally adding them. It's just combining. As you can see right here, the result that my name is Gary and my birthplace is Korea and the current age is 21. The reason why there's no space in these two is because let me add a space here, space in the beginning, and space in the beginning here. And if you run it again, you see that my name is Gary and my birthplace is Korea and current age is 21. So guys, next let's check whether course and what's fun is equal or not. Let's print. Let's write a print line system dot out dot print ln from semicolon in the end. We check course dot equal to what's fun so this will uh, output whether this string is equal to this string as you can see it has output a true which means they both are similar or true or are equal to and let's check the same condition for, for state and favorite state. And it's also true, of course, California is equal to California. So what if I wanted just C of the string? For example, I wrote a program which required me to just get the first initial of the of the text and find similar words to it. The way to do that is just to type course uh, dot substring zero. Zero, why? Because the first string can starts with zero, then it goes one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Let's also get the length of the string. Actually, let's do course dot length. Yeah, you just copy and paste. Just copy and paste this. I want. So length is thirteen. Let's say zero, one, two, three, 
4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, which is right. It's, it is 13 since we start with 0 and end with 12. So the reason that we're not getting the result for the substring was because we need to initialize the last uh, the ending position. So we had to start the substrings from from to where. So I want the substring from zero to one. So I want only C to print. Zero is the starting. The ending is one, which means only contains one. And if we press run, it should just print out C. As you can see right here, it does print out C. So if you were to change that to 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, if you want the full coding, it's a 0 to 6. As you can see, it has printed coding for us. So if you don't understand why 0, we can always get the index, mean the position of the C or the coding. So let's print out the index system that dot uh, print index of C. as you can see the length is 13 and the next index is 0. So the index of C is 0. So guys, I have had it I have added text for my print statements. Go ahead, you guys copy the text statements, I mean text inside your print statement too if you would like. Otherwise, let's continue to uh, to lowercase using the lower to lowercase to lowercase the string. So the way you would do that is let's first write a system that up that print so let's say course dot to lowercase and then then let's write another system dot out dot dot print and then to uppercase so what basically to lowercase does it it, it lowercase all the letters or the characters inside the inside the string and what uppercase is it does the opposite it uppercase all the letters inside the string before we run it let's move on to the next one let's learn how to do replace first so basically, for example, what I mean by replace first is, is that you can specify the part of a string you want to replace. So the way let's first write out a print statement that says that out. And you would do something like course dot replace uh, what do you want to replace let's say fun and then you would want to enter what you want to replace with it awesome so what course I replace will do is it will the target is fun basically fun will be replaced by awesome you can also replace the whole thing just by doing the same thing, but just so I mean the whole string.
before we run this one, let's do another string function, which we can we have, which is building inside the library. Print on source stack and string. So what Ansprit does is Ansprit will return true if the character sequence represented by the argument is suffix of the character and sequence represented by the object. This way it will return true if the if the string ends with n. Otherwise it will give out false. Let's run it. So first is land, next index, then the substring, then coding is fun. As you can see, it's all lowercase, coding that to lowercase, then coding is fun, all uppercase, then replace. Coding is awesome. As you can see, the fun has been replaced by awesome. And next, coding is fun, now is replaced by replaced, the string replaced. As the next line, it prints is n, uh, well, not n, but checks rather that string ends with n it does ends with n so it does return not true and as for this one it just prints out the name the birthplace and the current age and this checks whether it's equal to the state is equal to the parent state so that's it for today guys i hope you guys learned a lot please click subscribe and uh, click on the notification button Thank you. Bye.